I think for Notre Dame, the keys will be trying to make Trevor Lawrence uncomfortable, and that's a difficult thing to do. Notre Dame's got a good defensive line, and I think that uh, I think they've got playmakers in the secondary as well. So if they can make if they can make him uncomfortable, that will be their key defensively. On the other side, Clemson has shown some vulnerability in the back end in terms of giving up passing yards at least a couple of times. Certainly did to Jake Bentley and to Kellen Mond in the early part of the season. The question is, will Notre Dame be able to protect Ian Book from that front four and give them time to make plays? Because if, if they are able to give Book some time, Notre Dame's got size at receiver, and I think, I think that they can make some plays against Clemson. I certainly, I certainly favor Clemson in the game, but um, I don't think that this is a situation like the 2012 National Championship game where Notre Dame is completely overmatched. Clemson's the better team, but I don't think that they're uh, – I don't think Notre – it's not so much that Clemson's not as good, it's that I think Notre Dame is in a better place. Only in a sense that I didn't anticipate it being his show totally with Kelly Bryant and without Kelly Bryant on the team. But before Trevor ever stepped on campus, uh, I was having a conversation with Dabo, and uh, we were just talking about recruiting and different guys. And he goes, wait till you see this quarterback I've got. And he said, he said, I don't know exactly who to compare him to. He said, maybe because of his size, he's a little bit of a long strider, maybe Cam Newton or something like that. And I thought, man, that's pretty high praise. Now, he's obviously he's not as thick as Cam, and it, up to this point hasn't proven to be the same type of runner that Cam was. But it's not a, a crazy comparison in terms of effect and just pure foot speed. He's a long strider like, like Cam. He's got a big arm. And he's, uh, he, the ball just comes out of his hand, and it just looks beautiful. Looks like it's supposed to. So uh, Kirk and I did an early season game. We did the Clemson-Texas A&M game, and I went down to practice. And you know Kelly was still starting. And in fact, in that particular game, Kelly saved them because Trevor, for the only time I saw uh, this season, I thought, I don't, I don't want to say rattled because he's pretty unflappable, but he got a little out of sorts. A&M's defensive line can do that to you. Um, but watching him in practice, you could see that you didn't know when the day was going to come, but it was obvious that it was going to happen, that he was going to be the guy, because you just can't, you, you just can't keep that type of talent down. He's a remarkable young player. AP, hey, what's up, man? How are you? Good. Yes, without hesitation. Uh, the first Alabama season, I remember I was, what, Five going on six was 1971, and he is the best quarterback in my lifetime. I didn't see Namath and Stabler and Starr and Sloan, but in, in my lifetime of when I remember football, he is, he's the best. And it doesn't hurt that they've got a guy like Jalen Hurts that can step in and do what he did in the SEC championship game. But I, I won't hedge that bet at all. I think he's the best I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. But two, they completely develop this pocket system here. Well, there's a lot of RPOs in the system, and you know, Tua, when healthy, is you know, he's not Kyler Murray, you know, in terms of being a dual threat, but he can run. And when healthy, he moves much better than he has really for the second half of the season. Um, but they have changed the offense, and I think it's a product of two things. One, his enormous talent, and two, the uh, uh, enormous talent that they have at receiver. They have a, an embarrassment of riches at the receiver position, and it would be criminal not to use them. So they've, they've done that with Tua, and he's, you know, I think Tua described it pretty well. He said he was like a kid in a candy store. He can reach over and get a Snickers. He can have Skittles over here. You know, he can, you know, have whatever he wants because they've got running backs. They've got receivers. They've got one of the best tight ends in the country. And I think it's just the realization. It's one thing that Nick has done really better than anybody is to continually reinvent himself uh, to keep up with the trends in the game. It, Defense is still really important, really, really important. But you've got to be able to score to beat really good teams. Now, you've got to be able to put the ball in the end zone. And Nick, um, you know, was, was able to embrace 
a change in offensive philosophies. It started when Lane was there, and man, I think uh, I think Loxley, Mike Loxley's done an unbelievable job with that, and um, obviously it's paid off with him becoming the head coach at Maryland. But he, he's done a great job, and Dan Enos has done a great job coaching both Tua and Jalen. And you know, I think I think it really just shows that they've adapted with the times, and now they're as dangerous an offense as there is in the country. You think back over the guys who've been able to change sports, Dion, you know, played both, Bo, Charlie Ward went to, went to basketball, and Kyler I think might be um, as dynamic as any of those guys in terms of, you know, being able to be explosive running. He's got a tremendous, tremendous arm. And while the NFL has embraced, you know, quarterbacks who don't necessarily fit, fit the 6'3 prototype that we all grew up watching, you know, I'm not really sure exactly how big Kyler is, and he's not the thickest guy in the world either. If he were a little bigger, he would he would probably he may he will have his choice anyway. Somebody's going to draft him as well they should, but he would probably have a choice between what what was he ninth overall in baseball and probably number one overall in football if he were just a little bit bigger because he he's got great vision, he's got great anticipation, he throws guys open, he's got a tremendous arm. He's just not big, you know. What I mean, if he were bigger, it would be it would be different. That's the only thing. It might not matter as good as he is. He might still be able to. You know, see between them. That's what my buddy Doug Flutie always talks about. You know, Doug said, nobody can see over. Trevor Lawrence can probably see over them. But he's six six. You know, everybody else has to see between them. And, you know, I have no doubt that Kyler would be successful either way. But I would anticipate that he's going to go ahead and give baseball, uh, give baseball a whirl. But it's pretty unique. I'm not sure I understand exactly what you mean by that. Um, from what I understand, um, making the playoffs, mm -hmm. uh, teams right, right, yeah. Um, and a lot of teams felt like they were overlooked, mm -hmm. you know, by, by, by not being in the playoffs. Yeah. Well, look, I like the fact that it's difficult to get into the postseason. Uh, college football has the best regular season of any sport, professional or amateur. and. I don't think it has to stay at four forever to maintain that, but I, I like the fact it generates a lot of conversation and, and it's very difficult to get in. Um, I thought you had two more deserving teams this year, but you know you could you could take another look at it and say you know really this would be this is blasphemous in some. Uh, corners. This would be a really good year for the old BCS system when you just had Alabama and Clemson play because from the start to the finish they've been the two best. And you know we talk a lot about, to your point, about choosing the four best teams and using some subjectivity for those 13 committee members in whom I have a great deal of faith in the integrity of the process. Um, but we have to make sure that our definition of best as we perceive it on the outside, doesn't get so narrow that it's always just, who would I pick to win the game? Because if that were the sole definition of four best, I would have Georgia in the playoff. But I thought Oklahoma should have been it because I think when you have as small a field as we do in this, and it's a tournament, with a very small tournament, and the field is going to be this small, then the definition of best has to be slightly broader than just um, Vegas, power rankings, FPI, S&P Plus, who do I think would win the game? That needs to be a big part of it, and it can be an important part, but it needs to be a little broader. And in this case, I thought, uh, I thought the committee, I, I don't want to say they did the right thing, because I don't think there is a right answer, but they, did a, they came to a just and justifiable decision. That's, that's what you guys 